Yes. Uh, yeah, I think so. I'll take a look. I'm a very absent Facebook user. Yo, that claw. Hey, uh, boy, get <laughs> <laughs> hey, how's it going? Making some breakfast or some lunch? Making me some goddamn, you know, the shrimp gumbo. Is this like a speech just disorder now? You, you're just stuck in claw voice. Remember that jump alive, boy? Yeah, boy. Yeah. All right, boy. You're a fool, Are you enjoying this new genre of music known as ambient coda? <laughs> yes, it's my favorite type of music. Puts me to sleep at night. Gonna go kick ass in Tetris. I wish I could share my screen, then I could just show you the kick assery. Oh, yeah, because when I think of kick assery, I think of Tetris. Mm hmm. Yeehaw. If you stab him, you can get a baseline going noise. Yep. Noise. No. No. Yo, man, right. Claude, Claude finally run away. You you still holding a hostage, man. No, nah, I'm still here. No, nah, I'm talking about not. Nah, I, I got goddamn boy. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to, talk, talking about Claude. Oh, okay. Wait, who are you? Claude left me, boy. Claude left me, boy. It's just me now, boy. Drinking <laughs> the whiskey, you know, having a rough time now. Well, what are you gonna do now? Oh, okay. Oh. When Claw leave, I always got me the whiskey. Use the Chase mobile app to send money with just a tap. She'll be back. I think she'll be back. <laughs> she'll be, she be back. Claw always come back. No, you know. I think she, she hanging out with her cousin. Which, uh, he, a, he a tall guy, but he ain't, he ain't like me, you know. <laughs> Man, I ain't about the ads. Here we go. The, those ads are about you. Yeah, they like me, but I ain't about them. Yeah. You believe in magic? I, I don't. That's a shame. <laughs> You're missing out on a glorious it's a new reality. World.
I'm just gonna be a dick about this. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> I'm being a dick right now. I'm loving every minute of it. Noise. Yeehaw. Just <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even have to do anything. Okay, that's just sad. Okay, we're gonna try again. Yeah, you know, I feel like I'm a guy of simple taste. I just want somebody to hand feed me pastries while they beat me with an Allen wrench, you know? That sounds pretty nice. Not too hard. Eh, get it? Not too hard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, eh. uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said hard. Like that sort of thing. Like Beavis and Butthead should. Just like not even trying. Yeah, that's me in life. <laughs> yep. Mission accomplished. It's kind of easy to just like not try. You don't really have to. Bitch, I'm gonna kick your ass. Fuck you. Uh, it's like one of those things where I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna really try in life. I'm like, but I feel so alone and dead inside. And then, yeah. Okay, thought I was gonna be kick ass and badass. <laughs> don't burn it down now, there, son. God damn, boy, don't burn it down. Yeah. Burn my own head off, boy. Hold up, boy. Fuck you. Fuck you, bitch. So, are you gonna have to, like, crash Southern barbecues just so you can keep that accent from now on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Nigga, I'm gonna roast you. I wasn't. I wasn't even talking to you. God damn! I'm not even talking to you. Talking. Damn. Talking to you. Well, what are you even talking, talking to you? <laughs> I'm talking to this like this dude online, and like I'm trying to front, but it's failing. Yeah, okay, I lost. Shit. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna make it interesting. Okay, sure. Add extension. Okay. Don't don't don't, for, don't forget, Koro. Don't forget to put in the them sautéed onions and that ecstasy in there. Got to in that ecstasy. Mm-hmm. Oh Jesus Christ! What the fuck is this? Get this out of here. Get it out of my face! I don't want to see a no. Oh, for fuck's sake! I don't. I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't want it here. I don't want to deal with it. Be gone! Yeah. I'll try not to stop. Carolyn. 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 Yes. I'm talking to Carol. Wait, is that is Carolyn on mic? Yes. Oh, hi. Hello. So, uh, tell me about your day. Guess who's back. Jack is back? I don't know. I'm just asking him what's up. I ain't trying to put on, put on you know, pressure cut. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to talk to you normal, but I keep adopting that accent that I was goofing around with Koto with. So it's like I'm asking questions, but I'm like, oh, man, how, how, how your day doing? How... Uh, yeah. Who said hi to me? Is that how? Apparently it's oh, hi. Oh. <laughs> Caroline, boy. How you doing, sweet Caroline? Hi, Cotto. I can't hear you, Cotto. <laughs> Might be for the better. Just, just say yes. Just, just say yes. Yes. <laughs> I hope you're not telling me to say 
good, something bro. that everybody I wouldn't eat, normally bro. say. Everybody got to eat. That's what my mama said. I'm just going to ask you if you ate. I'm translating Kodo. Now the Kodo attempts to ask Carolyn if she has, in fact, eaten already today. Carolyn responds, yes. Kodo, seeming elated after hearing this news, goes to relate how his mother used to inform him to always remember to eat. Now Kodo continues. Sorry, it's not hot. I gotta go bring my dog in. What are you making? Maybe some good old gumbo shrimp. I jump alive. What you ain't saying, Caroline? I need help, Kenny. Where, Kenny? I need help, Kenny. I'm not answering you because I can't really hear you. No, I'm back. I'm back. I'm here. It worked. It's good. It's all right. It's all good. <laughs> Who's that now? Who's talking? Who doing the table with the thing and everything? It's Claw. It's Claw. It's Claw. I don't think it is Claw. Think you lied to me, boy. Oh, you lied to me. Honestly, I can't tell who that is. That is that Jacob? Yeah, it's me. Uh, it's Jacob. Yeah. So anyways, I was, I was on uh, God, goddamn balls trying to ask Karen questions. Everybody distracting me. My dog distracted me. Jacob distracted me. Man, it's bullshit. Your impression of claw is my bad than my impression of claw. Yeah, I, did, I, I didn't catch any of that. Na <laughs> composta. So, yeah. Okay, Were you the one that did uh, crossword puzzles, Carolyn? Very nice. Yes, so got him. Say that again, Ken. I said, were you the one that was doing crossword puzzles? I can't remember. I thought somebody was doing crossword puzzles. Not today, but. <laughs> no. No, not a crossword puzzle person. Well, darn, I have like 10 years of knowledge built up on crossword. No, I really don't. Uh, <laughs> bullet dodged. Do you do them? No. Mm. It's like, oh, here's an interesting thing to talk about that I don't know anything about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, there, there, I mean, most things in life I could probably get into, and I probably find them interesting, uh, but I don't, and that's sad. They make good, you know, things for distraction caches, caches. Right. See, but you also have to have those, like, various places. You just have to have, like, crossword puzzle books. Or so you, can, you just you just stash them around in, like, vehicles, rooms, just, just in case. Yeah. Going down the highway. Going down the highway, 85 miles an hour. You know what? This whole driving thing's boring. I want to do a crossword puzzle and then die. Uh, crossword puzzles are hard to do with one hand, so Sudoku is a way better choice. Sudoku? Yeah. I, I like the word searches. I, I'm not smart enough for the crossword puzzles. I still like those. Word searches. Those are, those are really annoying and borderline sadistic when there's no actual words <laughs> present. <laughs> She's like, find the words. I'm like, there aren't any. And it's like, you're right, there aren't any. I'm like, then what'd you say to find them? The crossword's like, because, I don't know. They, they, they use things. words like you. What? Yeah, like, crosswords usually use words that you never use. Like happiness? No, not like happiness. Like, sometimes... <laughs> Like the strange ass words, and 
like the strange ass words it's always somewhere in the sort of middle or like like one of the words you need to get otherwise you fail the entire puzzle it's always the names and stuff that kill me in crossword puzzles like if it's if it's actual words you know that have a definition yeah and that sort of stuff but yeah the like this person and that person were in this and you're like what or you know that the pop culture stuff or historical culture whatever the <laughs> Like, what? This, you don't know who Marshabara Shabba Shabba Dinga Dong is? And it's like, no, I'm fairly yeah. certain. Well, the thing that's random is you like learn some of the ones that they use a lot. Like, there's ones that they use a lot, and you're like, oh, okay. Hmm. Like, I know this now. I mean, it is an interesting learning experience. Like, if you just like see it, and then you see it the next week, and they reveal the answers, and it's like, okay. <laughs> so I, I don't have. Ain't nobody got that kind of patience. Uh, uh, well. Somebody. So a lot of unfinished crosswords. Now, hold on, ENTP. It's like, all right, um, done like 90% of this. I'm done now. Hold on now, ENTP. Somebody does have the patience for it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a thing. However, does an ENTP have patience? No. No, they do not. No. Is that FJs usually love crossword puzzles. Who does? ESFJs. ESFJs. I like the books of crossword puzzles because then when you get to the end of your night, you're like, okay, I... It's officially, you know, exhausted my actual knowledge of this one. Like, I can't fill it out anymore. You go to the next one, and then you can move on. Yeah. And just have a lot of, like, 90% complete crossword puzzles. I'm much more into Sudoku as well. Like, yeah. Oh, man, I could freaking play Sudoku for way too long. I, I think LC has the right idea. Just color in the crossword puzzles. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's the best idea. It's like, but you didn't spell it correctly, but I did color it correctly, and no one else does that. Just thinking about word searches, I'm always fighting them because it's like, you want to be methodical, but I also want to look at the whole thing all at once. Yeah. So I'm terribly inefficient. It's like, all right, methodically, no, no. And then you're like, psh, psh, and you're like, where was I at? Then <laughs> you just get mad. You're like, these words popped out at me. Why aren't these other words popping out at me? I think it was bored now. I like word searches a lot. They're fun. Yeah, I was just explaining my problem with them. Yeah. I like I like the Sudoku them. What about That's like what actual puzzles like class. where you put them together? Yeah, jigsaw puzzles are fun. Yeah, like the 1,000 piece. <laughs> I saw an advertisement for a puzzle that had no edge pieces. Like the, the end of it, they just had... And there's, like, like th and there's extra pieces. Yeah, five, five extra pieces. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want that. <laughs> it, it's like... You're, you're I've kinda, also wasted a lot of my life like making building puzzles. Like I can lock myself away. It's kind of massive. You might want to seek help. <laughs> Hey, Ken, so what's it like to be an INFJ? Uh, kind of masochistic. How, how, many, how, many weeks, how many weeks do you have free? Like, can you clear out your calendar for the next three weeks? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Well, all right, I'll try to give you a brief synopsis. Um, so uh, imagine going through life, starting out early on and now this is obviously me as an INFJ not every INFJ story but starting out earlier in the life and wondering why you just don't perform like other people what is the problem why why am I not keeping up with other people in certain ways and then realizing that there's apparently this thing called intuition and apparently it's a thing and having no fucking idea what that is and uh, basically figuring out that you know your modus operandi of how you basically supposed to exist. You didn't know that's what you're supposed to be doing this whole time. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, I'm probably learning how to be an INFJ along with everyone else. <laughs> I know that I'm working on learning to be an INFJ. Right. It was study group. I, I definitely feel more sensor-like in some ways, but I'm not effective enough to be a sensor. When I say effective, I mean like attention span. 
Like, I, I mean, like as far as sensing related things, like the attention span I have towards that is uh, woefully inadequate. So. Yeah. I was questioning my type too, because I was like, I could be an ENFP or I could be an ESFP, but I don't know the rationale behind that, but I don't know. I've seen, you know, how ESFPs are supposed to act, like they are supposed to have this attitude of, you know, YOLO pretty much and just go out and do things. I'm not sure. That's the thing is, I think on an individual case, you, you can get very differently appearing people. Um, like, uh, ah, shit, I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to process it in my brain. Um, fuck, what the fuck was I talking about? It, it's like with, uh, like, I, like I, I harp on about, like, dual related stuff quite often, but I know that there's, like, ESTPs that I just, I, I know without even meeting them, I know that there are ESTPs out there that I would not fucking get along with. Because I've met some of them, I haven't necessarily typed them, but I just know looking back at life, yeah, no, they were definitely an ESTP and we totally did not get along. But, uh, it's like, fuck, that had a reason, god damn. Okay, so another pro tip, uh, being INFJ, you say things and then sometimes you're not sure why you said them. Yeah. Lose that, and then you're just hanging there with conversational blue balls. <clears throat> I honestly can't say I've ever had that problem. Well, there you go. Oh, that's what Elsie said. Oh. Well. Yeah, I was just reading it. <laughs> yeah. I probably say things and then forget why I was saying them, but then I didn't really. But then I, would, the odds of me noticing are what's small, and the odds of me caring are even smaller. <laughs> so it goes. It goes a bit deeper. It's more like an existential crisis forms because it's like I can't remember what I was saying, and then I realize, you know, really in the grand scheme of things, I don't really know what I'm doing, and then I'm like, what is life? And then I'm like. You know, I'm not sure. And then it's just more more questions, more things. And it's that, know. like, staring into space with your jaw open state. Yeah. Yeah, it's the NI stare. It's the contemplating things. Uh, I definitely think that Enneagram plays a role, because I think I'm uh, 964, which is within the 469 archetype, which is the seeker, which is basically uh, triple doubting. So... You know that thing called doubt? Uh, a lot of that. Like, imagine going to a restaurant and ordering doubt, and instead of giving you one serving, they give you three. And you're like, listen, I did not ask, like, like if you're getting a hamburger, and you're like, hey, put some ketchup on there. They pour half a bottle on, and you're like, I did not order this. And they're like, you're going to fucking eat it. Is that again another thing I didn't really mean to share, but I shared. What was me? Yep. Yeah, that that that's that's a fucking problem. I'm also realizing I want people to know me, and I hate the sound of my own voice. <laughs> huh, See, I scared off Carolyn. <laughs> that's interesting. That's. Oh, Bill O'Reilly just is like out of Fox News. I just was like scrolling through Facebook and I saw that. <laughs> okay, thanks, Carolyn. Kelsey, I don't know if you've heard, you're on the Committee of Awards. And so I come to you briefly today to, Carolyn's also on the Committee, of course, but. Uh, I come to you briefly to pose a thought. I want to offer up to the committee for committee consideration a specific act of usefulness, named act of usefulness. And I want to nominate Josh for having a specific named act of usefulness. I went and got the amphetamine-containing inhalers he recommended. 
and I got the calcium carbonate and acid to be recommended because that if you take out the cotton part of this, eat it, it's got 50 milligrams of speed in it. <laughs> and that if you want your speed to work better, you take in general, if you have a basic basic stomach acid rather than acidic stomach acid, and that will help the speed work better. So while John hasn't been around a long time, I think I just wanted to throw that out there for the committee's consideration. An element to consider is a specific named active utility, such as the one I just indicated, helping Eric get high better. Fucking fly! You know, one of the things I like about real life is you can't make this shit up. All right, pretty useful, though, right? He's been pretty useful with that. Trying to take, I'm going to give me my day this daily speed. I mean, no, it's just the situation. It's like I got I got my friend here, uh, who's man old enough to be my father. I met him on the internet. He traveled across the country to visit me one time, and uh, now we're sitting here talking. And he's regaling to me how a person he met recently on the internet uh, has informed him how to dismantle inhalers for the speed inside. And uh, whilst telling us that, he then starts trying to kill flies with a blowtorch. Mm -hmm. I'm like, only and, in reality would things be so strange. And you aren't providing mental services, mental health services for this guy. To be noted. Normally that story is fine, but it involves you being a mental health service provider. <laughs> it is slightly strange, but in a wholesome, family, fun-loving, not really, it's, 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 it's just kind of strange. I consider myself an official amateur mental health care provider. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think rabble should be a verb for quadrabble. I rabble that. Uh, that's rabble. I think it's already now. You just, it just became one. No doubt. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at that Swiss cheese. Yep. That is some nice cheese. That's a perfect piece of Swiss cheese. Looks just like Swiss cheese with all their holes in the right places. Yeah. It's actually like uh, Wait, so, Eric, do you do, normally do amphetamines? Yeah. Normally oh. is a strong word. Frequently, yes. Oh, like three weeks out of the month? Yeah. Wait, why oh, do you I do mean. it? How do I do it? I take Adderall. I just took uh, 60 milligrams of Adderall. I think I'm going to take this 50 of, I've never done this before, but I think I'm going to toss in a 50 milligrams of Lev methamphetamine. See how that works. Did Apparently you get, right, kind of did you, did you get the right one? Because I remember he said a specific one. I can't remember which yes, one. Yes, baby, CBS brand. The moment he said it, he reiterated the thing like five times to me to make sure I got all the details. I picked up all the details the moment he said them, and they were locked in my memory, weren't going anywhere. I knew exactly <laughs> the kind of inhaler, the exact store, what I was looking for for the amphetamines. You only had to mention it briefly once. That, I won't forget. He can barely remember to feed himself, but when it comes to his meth. Yeah, right. When it comes to speed, it's a different matter. Now, you got to break this thing open to get the cotton out and eat it, but... I don't know if I'm quite there for today. Maybe I'll save this for some day when I don't have regular speed or something. I don't know. I don't, I'm not feeling it right this moment. It's, it smells so menthol. It seems gross. You should, uh, you should collect various, like, odd forms of, like, uh, fuck, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, drugs, more or less. Just, like, just like in different odd forms and put them together in a box and save them for a rainy day, but label it box of chintzy. When times get chintzy. All I got is this this leaf, these inhalers, <laughs> these extra strength Tylenols. Hey. <laughs> you just pull out the box. All right, folks, things are a little chintzy. Yeah. So now I just got to wait for the drugs to take effect. So I'm waiting for the... I was going to say, I'm, I'm waiting for the day that TWFP uh, gets me 
Swatted. Swaddled? Swatted. Swat yeah, SWAT like team. SWAT, SWAT team showed up to my house. A swatting that shakes your house. But then, like, why would a SWAT team show up at our door? Uh, because I, don't, I think I don't, hostage or something. I don't concern myself with practical whys. I only concern myself with the fear. Yeah, that's it. Just fear. See, I want to know why it's going to happen. And I think of the possibility and understand it to some should, extent. You put a sign up in front on your house in the front that says, "Attention, SWAT team! You have probably you have been you have been played. Do not come busting into my house. I'm be happy to answer any of your questions. You don't need to be all crazy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that'd be a good sign to have in front of your house." But, like, what would cause the SWAT team to break through the door? Somebody calls them and says, Chloe's got a hostage locked up in her basement or something. Shit. And then they have to respond. They have to take 911 calls seriously. But. Oh, damn. They, so somebody could, like, play me really bad if, like, they hated me or something. Yeah, but if they get caught swatting you, it's a big, big bust. Yeah, unless of course they did it from an anonymous phone line, and they must hate me for some reason. So I must have done something really horrible to make them want to do that. Or they could just be douchebags. You never know. Yeah, that is true. I think I'd call SWAT teams just because I'm lonely. <laughs> yeah. Nine one one. I've got an emergency. It's called loneliness. Yeah. Called the SWAT team shows up. I'm like, surprise! There's like birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, I met, I'd be like, I, I, I made great, great friends with Bill. I'm still going to jail, but Bill's really cool. You know, there was this dude online, and like, we flirted and stuff, but then like, I rejected him. And then afterwards, he flipped out and was like, okay, I'm going to hire a hitman off of the deep web to come into your house because of this. And I'm just like, oh, damn. Well, that would be spending a lot of money on a little bit of hurt feelings. You, you know somebody's never serious when they refer to that part of the internet as the deep web? It's really? Like, it's, well, I mean, even if that's what it's called, it's like a meme at this point. I'm going to hire someone off the deep web. That probably means you don't know how to operate it well enough if you're even referring to it as that. People who talk about it in the know call it the Internet's crotch. <laughs> you, you guys haven't heard it because you're not you know, you're hanging in circles. but Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's probably more accurate. Well, he said that he would do it with, like, Bitcoin because, but then I don't know how he'd do that. Yeah, he sounds like a fucking because chihuahua. Because dark web shit doesn't take Bitcoin anymore. They only take shit like dark coin or stuff like that. Other other cryptocurrencies that aren't Bitcoin because Bitcoin has traces the transaction. <laughs> Still, like, he bragged about DDoSing people. Okay. Yeah, that probably means that he never did. It also means he's a bad person. Because you shouldn't be. Unless they don't really deserve it. Yeah, well, I was ignorant at the time, so I got scared by it, and I thought he was serious. Then my mom came in, and like I told her what happened, and then she scared the shit out of him. You were ignorant, okay? It's pronounced yeah. ignorant. Yep, I was ignorant. <laughs> Wait, what are you smoking? Marijuana. Okay, what type of marijuana? Well, let's see. This one is called... Where is it? Oh, that's right. It's legal there. I forgot. Yeah, it's called Mini Jack. Mini Jack. I also have some moon rocks here. I've got your vanilla and cream moon rocks. And I've got your 
regular flavor Moon Rocks. This is from like a vanilla ice cream bud or something. It's like, this is what the bud's called. It's not like flavored. It's just, that's the strain they use for the stuff. And it's really strong. Moon Rocks are, one way that I can get high actually is by smoking some, putting some serious energy into smoking Moon Rocks because regular bodies don't really give me that high usually. See, like, that bong rip kind of faded me out for a second. That's what you want bong rip to do. You don't want it to just stand there looking pretty, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So Ken, you were present for that previous conversation with between me and Taylor, and you chimed in a couple times. Various people did. What do you do? You think there's more disagreement between us? Or anybody else who was there? Ken, can you hear me? He can't hear me. I guess or something. I just got back to the computer. Well, well, I had said that you were here during that me and Taylor conversation, and I wanted to know if you think that there's a disagreement between me and Taylor about anything. Not not that we're disagreeing, like not like that, but I mean just like if there's actually a point in dispute and what you think it is, if there is one. Uh, I'd made the comment that it seemed like both of you are arguing more so in favor of what would work for you personally, which that could also extend to other people who had enough traits or I guess like whatever, like just enough things in common, but I think that there's a uh, sort of demarcation between you and Taylor on certain things. Can you and be? I think you actually say words that instead of da dancing around the question. I no, I'm trying to explain it as best I can. Okay, my bad. Dancing around my the bad. question. My bad. Um. No, but basically, I think he was he was more of the impression that no, Eric, you don't need to figure this stuff out or pin it down in terms of the uh, or settling shit as you were calling it. Like you know, ha having having that in order, having that be certain, he he was less convinced, or his his mind went less in that direction, and he was more concerned with, uh, you know, advocating that you try to meet your sexual needs or whatnot, and you were trying to tell him, no, that's not enough. I need to have this shit settled. In fact, that's kind of less important. Even it's necessary but insufficient. Right. Whereas I think, just in general, he was putting more weight. <sighs> It's putting more weight on that. Uh, and so I, I think in both cases, neither of you, I, I think the reason why I drug on as long as it is, because neither of you were really wrong. You were just coming at it from two different perspectives. 
And really what it was coming down to is, well, personally, I think this. And then the other person saying, well, personally, I think this. And well, since it was... The real question that I had, which is, I think I should settle. I think I should box this shit down and settle down with this woman. Uh-huh. And I've only known her a little while, a few days. And objectively, I can see all the arguments to say, don't do that. Mm-hmm. So I believe, though, that it makes most logical sense for me to do that. And yet I wasn't really arguing the reasons I have to do that that are specific to my circumstances and her so much as I was arguing the general value of my way versus his way. That it's uh, Basically, I'm arguing for the legitimacy of that not not wanting to date and stuff is legitimate. It's not necessarily always about fear or whatever. It has uh-huh. been in the past for me, but that that the, the solution of the issue is itself a massive benefit that has to be in, incorporated into the equation, more so than people think necessarily. Hi, Cameron. I am talking to internet friends and, uh, you know, him here at the house until I got to go to work around 4 o'clock. Around 4? Yeah. I was going to ask you to maybe go bike riding, but I don't know if that sounds like probably not a good amount of time. Yeah, it's not really enough time not for that. Actually. But if you okay. want to swing by and pull a couple balls, I'd be down for that if you want. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Right, yeah. All right, cool. That was Cameron. Um, so, yeah, it's a tricky issue, right? Like, you, there's always this. If I find the right person, she'll, she'll click on all levels not just on a role filling level and other level or whatever, you know, that it'll be magic that I'll be desperately turned on by her. I'll be, she'll always say the right thing and, and fucking have the right attitude about everything and, and be wiser than me in ways that aren't threatening to me. And all this, all the fucking shit in the world that you can imagine a person being perfect about. But that just isn't how life works. You've got to find somebody who you have to understand what your core needs are from this person in the role that they will fulfill. For me, uh-huh. from my perspective, and to realize that that person is going to fill a role that's important and not other roles that you might also think are important. I mean, people say they want to be with their best friend. Like, they go, I oh, want my, my significant other to be my best friend. But to me, those are different roles. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Probably because I'm not personally emotionally invested in this. Uh I, I'd be more towards advocating trying it out. You mean slow things down and stuff? It's not no, like, no, 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 no. That's not what I was saying. I was saying do it, and you know, get, got different people advocating all this different stuff. We'll, you know, just put that on the back burner, and if for whatever reason this doesn't work out, revisit those things. But it's like if you're saying that all these different things are lining up, then. I feel like it's more problematic that you would stop and slow down. Well, I, I think this is my way of doing due diligence, right? I don't want to do due diligence on the physical plane where I date a bunch of women to make sure that I've seen all my options. I right. want to do med- I want to do due diligence on a metaphysical plane where I'm convinced that my framing works, that the logical justifications I have for locking this shit down make sense. That it is as reasonable to predict a good outcome from this as any alternative that presents itself. And that the reality that there are lots of potentialities and that something better might come along is uh, 
you have to choose to you have to choose to count that as a legal impact or not. If you choose to count it as a legal impact, then you're never going to be satisfied. That's my take on it. Carolyn, yeah. what are you? Are you listening at all? Yeah, listening? kind of. <laughs> um, <laughs> I keep wanting to just pin it down on one person uh, with Kimberly. Is that her name, Kimberly? Yeah, Kimberly. Yeah, I liked her when she was in the room, and I felt like she was open enough to try to understand you. Um, she didn't just shut you down. So, um, I think she's in a place in her life where she's ready to take on a role that I need to take on as well. Her kid's now 19 talking about moving out. She's got two jobs, but if we directed our combined energy to this, then We'd make more money than the amount of money she makes from the hours she puts into that for sure. So, I mean, there's lots of practical things to consider. Nobody thinks that should matter, but to me, it matters. It, it matters. It does not matter. I, I feel like the majority of my sort of uh, romantic avoidance circles around the fact that those practical matters are what I'm most heavily considering. Well, I mean, I have another party, Helen, who's indicating to me that she's ready to come to terms with the fact she's got to make a real choice. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, I don't think you should give her another chance. Uh. Uh, Helen, Helen, Helen. You know, Helen backed out, and I was trying to get her placed back in line. Right. Well, that's not the problem. That's just FI DOMs, standard operating procedure. They're FI DOMs. <laughs> you know, they're not thinking in terms of like. So, problem crazy. number one. No. But what my point is that if I even if I were to go with that option, number one, it's a less logically sound option. It would be more of a feelings based option for me because I will acknowledge that one. You feel very powerfully, like, but she uses her FI magic on me, and I can't persist in that state for long periods of time, and it, so it's kind of, it's kind of, um, it's kind of like the kind of good thing that kind of hurts, and as it persists for a while, it starts to kind of hurt more than it is good, even though it's good. I, I don't know, it's uncomfortable, but uh, FE kind of. Loving makes a lot more sense to me because it's she, she's polite and nice and kind and shows that she is trying to show me that goodness and I do the same in return and we both speak the same language. That works. That works well because we reinforce each other's thing. With an FI dom, I got to be like, I have to be the one who's in charge of emotions. Yeah. I'm attending to her emotions. And I'm not letting her emotionalism cause me to be emotional. So a lot to maintain. So a lot to maintain. Now, granted, Helen is so hot. And that has that. She, I, I don't think she'd be on the. I mean, I like her a lot, too. She's very nice as well. She's kind. And I can tell that she genuinely loves me and has continued to genuinely love me from the whole time this whole time even though we're not like talking really we don't talk face to face really anymore we just sort of message back and forth she demonstrates in ways that are not intended to demonstrate or maybe they are but i interpret it as real love in ways that she doesn't think it works that way but i see that she deeply deeply loves me in a weird FI way. But that's not a good reason to be with her. Okay. I'm sorry, I just felt happy by that. There's <laughs> not a reason to be with her because I can't handle that kind of greed love. 
I like being the recipient of it, but I can't stay there that long. It, it breaks me down. So. It sounds difficult. The other issue is if I were to go say, yes, Helen, come move out here and stuff, it's going to take me a while to get that shit set up properly before she can actually come out here. That means I'm waiting longer. And during that waiting period, I'm going to be extremely frustrated because once again, I'm having to put off what I need to get locked down for longer. And especially with the Helen situation, I won't really, really feel certain that she's coming until she's actually here. So that's going to be, that would be an extreme challenge. Also, I know for a fact that Helen would not meet my SI needs very well at all. She wouldn't be a manager of me. She wouldn't handle my business. She wouldn't be that in charge, checking to make sure everything's cool kind of person that I need, who then is also totally deferential in the bedroom. It, it, in fact, she, she at FI Doms, they know what they want, and they're quite insistent that it go that way. FE Doms, they know what you want and know how to make you happy. I like the latter, I think. But then, like, what about ENFPs? You guys are FI second. I mean, that's a nightmare beyond all reconciliation because you have any first or possibilities. You can always imagine yourself feeling even stronger towards the next person or feeling slightly different shades of, of good. you got to try all the different shades of good because you're any first. INFPs, at least, are loyal. <laughs> no offense, ENFPs, but you guys like to fuck around. I, I, I'm, I'm super not cheating because my whole point is my needs are best met by not any specific subset of what a chick provides but by the fact that that whole set of things is locked down that's the core thing that is most valued by me so i don't cheat because i'm already in the promised land it's locked down locked downedness is the goal yeah I wish I could understand and have the capacity to actually be sustainable in that regard. Well, it's because you're good with your feelings that you can do what you, you do. It's because you know you can continue to build good relationships with new people and, and th there's lots of possibilities there. For me, because I'm bad with my feelings, I need this shit to be T-I-T-E. It needs to make good logical sense, which means you need to be make good sense on a practical level. And if that all fits into place, and also you make me feel SI good, since I can't use my FI hardly at all, you can't. it's hard to make me feel FI good. It's possible, as the INFP showed, but that's, uh, that's a wicked drug. <laughs> that's not a good drug. That's an unsafe drug. That makes me crazy. It's like we're absolutely sure that I'm an ENFP. I'm not. I'm assuming you are based on. I mean, you, yeah, you are. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I don't know why. Even. You could be an ESFP, but I don't think so because you're pretty goddamn intuitive. So well, I, got, like, I got ENFP. I, I guess the thing is that, like, I want to make absolutely sure that I'm ENFP, not ESFP. And sometimes I kind of challenge it because it's like, you know, I like talking about theoretical stuff, but I don't really, I, I've never experienced an ESFP. So I can't really discern. I don't think you'd be hanging out talking so much if you were in the SFP. <laughs> I think that's the difference. They don't really like to sit around and talk all that much. They like to party and stuff and, and go dancing. I mean, I like to go do all that stuff too, but I also like sitting around and talking about different ideas. How many orgies is too many for one day? Um... Well, it depends on a lot of different things. Like, it depends on, uh, first of all, it depends on your body makeup. Secondly, because, like, I mean, I know that, like, if you're, like, 300 pounds, you probably wouldn't be able to just keep going. After a while, you'd get pretty tired. 
because <laughs> your weight kind of has a significant impact on your capacity to continue fucking. I don't know. Maybe a 300 pound person could continue fucking for long periods of time. But I don't know. I think after a while they would get tired. That's a great answer to the question. How many orgies is too many in one day? <laughs> um, it, it goes back to body makeup. Um, it, it, are you asking how many, me? Many, how many orgies is too many in one for one in one day for me? Given my body makeup. Uh, well, for me, probably uh, I'd say ten. Mm -hmm. Okay, ESFP. I mean, I know you're being silly, kind of, but also, it's like you're thinking about it in terms of the physicality of it. Like, how much can your body take? To me, one orgy is too many for one day. By far. It's far too many orgies. I don't want any orgies. I, mean, I have a zero orgy per day rule. I mean, I don't know the real, I'm not really considering the reality of it. I'm actually just thinking about it conceptually. And it's like, I don't right. even know. But that's how you're thinking about it conceptually, right? The way you first, in, your first instinct about how to think about it conceptually is to re reference the body. <laughs> like how exactly it would all work out. But my first thought when we're thinking about an orgy is, all sorts of meaning-related shit. Like, oh, that would be complicated. Like, what is this? Am I comparing myself to this guy? Or you know, like, shit like that. Like, how complicated would that be? Like, what what orgy situation would I be comfortable with? Would I be comfortable with just two chicks? Probably for. A, but it seems kind of weird. And like, my that's how I think about orgies. And I also think about the emotional thing, too, about it. Like, would I actually get along with the people involved? What would they be like? How old would they be? I don't think any of those things either. I think about it from my perspective about how it would impact my identity build. It never even occurs to me to wonder who these people are. I just, they're either chick, two chicks, three chicks, if we got a dude in there, that changed the equation entirely. And do I want to participate in that kind of brash SE folderol? Uh, those are the questions that come to mind for me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I would, it, like, I don't think realistically I would feel comfortable in it because I would want to observe it <sighs> at a distance first and kind of get a feel for what's going on. And I wouldn't necessarily be able to just dive in and join exactly. But, I mean, I'm open-minded to the concept of an orgy, but I just don't think I would, like, I don't know. Like, I, I think I would have to, like, try to get a feel for it. And, like, I'm trying to imagine myself in the situation. Because I could imagine so many possibilities for what would happen because like of different types of people that would be there too and how that might go down. Nah. Right. right. Could be lepers. Body parts falling off left and right. That would be difficult. Or they could all like be like really obese people, and I mean, I, not that I have anything against obese people, but personally, I'm just like not attracted to 300 pound people. And I'm what about <laughs> leprophiliacs? Would you like to hang out? You, you the, the lepers and the leprophiliacs. I really don't know. <laughs> <coughs> okay. I feel the speed kick in. I've got to do some cleaning up right now. I'm going to leave this on, but I'm going to mute myself. And it looks like just you, me, and Elsie in here anyway.